joining us this morning. I'm Maria Bartiromo, and it is Thursday, January 18th. We are coming to you live from the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland this morning. It is 8 a.m. on the East Coast, 2 p.m. here in Davos. The Senate voting today on a continuing resolution to keep the government funded until March. The House takes up the bill tomorrow. It is expected to pass both chambers. President Biden reportedly says he's ready to change course on border policy. After a high-stakes meeting at the White House yesterday with congressional leaders on border and Ukraine funding, House Speaker Mike Johnson and other Republicans are pushing back, saying the president needs to pass a border bill first, then focus on Ukraine. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, however, says they have to address both issues together at the same time. Watch. The president himself said over and over again that he is willing to make uh, to move forward on border, and so. We said we have to do both. There were a couple of people in the room who said, let's do border first. We said we have to do both together. The only way we will do border and Ukraine, or even either of them, is bipartisan. Joining me right now is Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn, a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Senator, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for you joining too. us this morning. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Oh, can you walk us through the process here? Where are you on this continuing resolution? Yes. What you're going to see is votes starting about 12.30 today. You're going to have four amendments that will come from the conservative side of the aisle. And we would love to see some reductions in spending to these outlays that are there. And then there will be a vote on the continuing resolution. And, Maria, of course, we want to avoid a government shutdown. Government shutdowns are expensive. And what we need to do is get busy with these appropriations bills, the House is going to have to pick up their pace. The Senate had their bills out of committee and ready to go back in July. And we need the House to finish their work, get those to us, and let's return to regular order, which will allow us to go after some of this spending. And, Maria, I am one of those. I say, look, we have to freeze federal spending, federal hiring and federal salaries and start to get this bureaucracy slimmed down. It is too expensive. Mm. It's too much government. The American people cannot afford this. Do you believe these reports that President Biden is ready to change course on the border? The Democrat Party and this administration have to realize that what they are doing is making illegal entry legal. They work on that every single day. And people are watching this very closely. The border is the number one issue that people talk about. Now, the president is probably hearing from his campaign team, you got to do something about the border. The border is wide open. When you have 30 terrorists so far this year that have been apprehended, when you have 1.7 million gotaways, and we have no idea how many terrorists are in that, people, whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, an Independent, a Libertarian, a Green Party, number one item is, what are you doing about the border? Because it makes us less safe with this open border. I think that's what he uh, is I, hearing. Yeah, I would be hopefully change his course. Are, are you saying that there were 30 people that were apprehended on the terrorist watch list so far this year? It's only January 18th. So far this well, no, so far this calendar, this uh, fiscal year. Okay. So you go back okay. to October 1, and mm -hmm. that is where you get the 30 number. And Maria, mm -hmm. people okay. are aware of this. They're watching the crime. It makes them miss President Donald Trump, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, I want to get your take on foreign policy as well, because the U.S. military has fired another round of missiles against the Houthi controlled sites in Yemen. Yesterday, we learned this, and it came after the Houthis attacked a U.S. bulk carrier in the Gulf of Aden. There have been at least 34 Houthi strikes in the Red Sea since November 19th. <coughs> the administration is now designating the Houthis as global terrorists, but not adding the group back to the list of foreign terrorist organizations, right. which is what the Trump administration had. Um, we know that President Biden, when he walked into the Oval Office, he overturned everything that Trump did, and that <coughs> included putting the Houthis on the terrorist list. Uh, he, he took them off the terrorist list. I, I don't understand that decision. 
And now you've got National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby defending the original decision to remove them. Uh, and, and, and they're actually saying that if they behave, they could be taken off again. Watch this. I've got to get your reaction, Senator. Listen. Yeah. So a big reason why we delisted them literally on day one uh, was to address a dire, dire humanitarian situation on the ground. Um, and as I said today, it remains dire in many cases. If they, if they choose to stop these attacks, then we certainly have the option at our disposal to remove this designation that we just, that we just issued. What is he referring to, Senator? The, they, they removed them because of a dire situation on the ground? Maria, are they terrorists this, or not? They are terrorists, and this is classic appeasement. Look, Iran was broke during the Trump administration because Donald Trump put sanctions in place. They could not sell their oil, which meant they could not fund Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, ISIS, all these groups, these proxies. And because of that, the Houthis were, they were broke. Now, the, when they take them off the foreign terrorist organization list, and they remove that, then you've got the Houthis that the banks can't go in and seize their assets, and you also have them able to get U.S. visas. Now, so Biden says, well, we're going to redesignate them, but they do them as a specially designated terrorist and globally so that they can still get visas and banks cannot take their assets. This is why you have to go back and you put them as a foreign terrorist organization and you stick that on there and leave them there. Because, look, 130 attacks, you look at what they are doing, the dollars they're going to cost U.S. consumers and consumers globally because of what they are doing there in the Red Sea. This is some Something that this White House has been so wrong on this issue, it makes our world less safe, it makes our country less safe.